So the Valley Railroad began in July of 1871, and they began passenger service and freight service. There was not a lot of viable reasons to keep this line open. The freight traffic had diminished almost nothing. And in 1968, they abandoned this line. A bunch of grown men that I like to refer to as the Essex Steam Train and Riverboats founding fathers decided, wouldn't it be a great location to start a tourist railroad? And they set to work to prepare the line and prepare equipment. And the Essex Steam Train and Riverboat, as we know it, was born in July of 1971. basically a boiler on wheels. Steam was provided from the boiler through a series of valves and piping down to the cylinders, cylinders which contained very big pistons that were mechanically connected to the wheels uh, by drive rods and other associated rods and they propelled the locomotive down the tracks. The noises and sounds associated with a steam locomotive are different than anything else. Every sense is heightened around the steam locomotive and you see it, you can feel it. The ground shakes when it goes by. For me, as a kid, I remember being captivated by the exhaust noise of the steam locomotive. There was nothing like it and I could feel the power. And you don't get that with everything. One of the reasons steam locomotives no longer run is because they are terribly inefficient and they are very expensive to operate as far as fuel and water. And it takes a long time to get them ready each morning. We don't build new fires each day. Well, we do something called banking a locomotive where you don't keep the entire fire, the surface area of the firebox ignited. You pile up coal in the back of the firebox and that sits overnight. It helps keep some pressure in the boiler and gives you a fire to work with in the morning. The morning prep includes pushing that bank out so you cover the entire grate surface, um, opening valves, filling lubricators, you actually have to stick your head in places and look around um, and shine lights sometimes to find things that maybe have failed, that are broken, um, that have loosened up. The things that drive the wheels, the bearings associated with it, the suspension that holds the frame up off the wheels, all of those require inspections each morning. Operating a steam locomotive from the engineer's perspective, it's a very labor-intensive job, actually. The conditions in the cab are usually hot, very dirty, loud, so he's got a number of things to keep an eye on, you know, aside from blowing the whistle for crossings to maintain steam pressure in the boiler and keep an eye on the fireman who is shoveling the coal. So the fireman, aside from shoveling coal and keeping up water, um, also has to be the eyes on the left-hand side for the engineer. It is a link to the past that not many people have anymore. We don't go very fast, we don't go very far, but if you ride Amtrak, the windows are closed. So you can see the scenery, but you can't hear it. With us, our train windows open. Um, you can hear the sound of the steel wheels banging through the, the rail joints, the clickety-clack, if you will. You're back here in the coaches, but you can hear the train whistle when it's blowing for every crossing. Um, I think all of that combined, and. And, and then the comfort of the boat ride on the river. If you travel up and down the lengths of the Connecticut River, other than an occasional marina, it's all residential area. It's undisturbed. If you look at photos from 60 years ago, it looks the same.
but this is unique. We have a old train pulled by a steam locomotive and we have the option of connecting with a riverboat. So if you want to do a train ride in a riverboat, this is the place for you. Uh, we offer both. Um, and, and, it's, and it's a great combination and it's a very unique combination. It's not one you get anywhere else.